This lecture focuses on step two of evidence-based public health practice, acquire the evidence. The learning objectives for this lecture include applying best practices for searching resources, how to access those resources, and describing in more detail hints for searching these resources. Once you have your question in an answerable form that is formatted into the PICO format, you'll be using those terms to search for the evidence. We'll be discussing next the best places to search and how to access those resources. Evidence can come from a variety of sources. Academics often turn to peer-reviewed material first, as the process tends to enhance the quality of the information. Sometimes one needs to go beyond this to the gray literature, such as dissertations, theses, conference papers, government reports, and so on. Why look at these other resources? First, it can take several months before a study is published, and practitioners often need information quickly on new issues. Second, studies may not be published in a journal because the researcher lacked the time or resources to write it up. Professional meetings and communications can be a great source when asking what can go wrong with an intervention. Let's briefly look at the differences between how you access resources now and how you access these once you graduate from A&M. After you graduate, it will be important to find out what your options are depending on where you have moved to or where you are working. Ask at your workplace if it has a partnership with a local university or medical library. In addition, your local public library will have more resources than you might think. As an A&M student, you have access to thousands of resources including databases, e-journals, books, and of course highly trained librarians who have put together a public health subject guide. The link is shown here. This guide provides links to the subscription-based resources and some free ones as well. Click on Finding the Literature to see the recommended databases across different disciplines within public health provided as tabs across the top. This figure is a generalized way of thinking about the available evidence. First listed is systematic reviews and other synthesized research. We'll talk about that more on the next slide. Next, primary studies, followed by surveillance and other data, legal and policy documents, books, and lastly, internet searches. Let's start by looking at systematic reviews. There are three main types of reviews, narrative, scoping, and systematic. Narrative reviews are commonly written to summarize the critical points on a particular topic. They're also referred to as literature reviews. While systematic reviews are a study of studies, meaning it is a research method that aims to answer a question by analyzing studies which meet specified criteria. In between these two types of reviews is the scoping review. This has a broad question, just like a narrative review tends to, but it also has a set of methods that you follow and describe to your reader, which is more similar to a systematic review. So in comparing the reviews, narrative reviews tend to have a broad question, be very subjective, and provide little information on the methods, while the systematic review focuses on a specific question should be very objective and have its methods clearly and appropriately described. Although the recommendation is to start with systematic reviews in primary studies, many people start at the bottom of the pyramid, going directly to Google. While it has its advantages, Google is not a reliable source to quickly get to the most useful evidence. The National Library of Medicine has been called the largest public health library in the world. 
NLM has numerous projects to support and collaborate with public health agencies. The National Network of Libraries of Medicine under NLM is made up of eight regional medical libraries selected to support and access health information to health professionals and patients. On a local level, institutional, hospital, and academic, and even public libraries can help support access to health information. The National Library of Medicine provides many online resources. This slide shows four. Of course, the most well-known is PubMed. A newer resource is PubMed Health, which focuses just on systematic reviews. In addition, there is phpartners.org. This provides links in collaboration with multiple agencies. Lastly is Medline Plus. This is the National Library of Medicine's consumer health resource. Let's tour PubMed briefly, as most of you have probably searched it many times before. In this example, the population is children, the health issue, obesity, and the interventions we are looking for are community-wide. Notice that the limits on the left side navigation includes review. Unfortunately, this review tag includes all types of reviews, not just systematic reviews and meta-analyses. While you are affiliated with Texas A&M, if you go to PubMed through any of the library's links, you can get full text by clicking on the Find Text at TAMU button near the citation. Of course, PubMed also has links to many free resources, so you may have seen any of these buttons shown here. To assist in finding and sorting citations quickly into primary studies and systematic reviews, PubMed has a set of queries called clinical queries, which you can see here. Once you go to this page, you can enter a term up at the top, and then it will quickly give you results in clinical study categories, systematic reviews, and medical genetics if you're interested in that. Lastly, if you already know the citation that you are looking for, try the single citation matcher. This will take you to a page where you can enter the information that you already know to quickly get you to the citation you are looking for. PubMed now has a new resource called PubMed Health, which is a collection of systematic reviews from 2013 to now. It includes many systematic reviews already available in PubMed, plus many others. You can get to it by clicking on the drop-down in PubMed and selecting PubMed Health. From there, you will quickly see what's new. In addition, there are resources just for researchers that will help with effectiveness research methods. This includes many books, which are free to read online, including understanding health statistics, better research for better health care, and making sense of health advice. Another great resource is the Public Health Partner site a collection of government agencies, public health organizations, and health sciences libraries have gathered together to make this mega site, meaning a site of sites broken down by subjects and major areas of public health. There are a listing of hundreds of authoritative sites related to important health topics. Lastly, this is Medline Plus, an important and useful guide for consumer health questions. It includes encyclopedia-like pages on health topics, information about drugs and supplements such as echinacea, and videos and tutorials. It can be transformed into a Spanish language site and also a site to make it easier for the elderly and those with sight issues to read. In the next lecture, we will discuss how to appraise, apply, and assess the evidence that you have found.